hello, and thank you so much for joining me. So I did this little sketch in my Stillman and Burn Hot Press watercolor sketchbook. Um, it's a drawing of myself as well as uh, some of my, my interests. Uh, I wanted to make this video just so I could share with you all a little bit more about who I am, um, what my interests are, and what kind of content you can expect from me. This is something that I've seen on um, other YouTube channels. Um, I really enjoy watching um, I'm a Wonder on YouTube. Her content is really good. And uh, this is one of the first videos, at least, that she has uploaded currently. It was also something that was going around in the art community on Instagram a, while, a long time ago, so I'm incredibly late, but I think it's kind of a fun thing to, to include on my channel. Alright, so let's get started. Some of you might be curious about the path of an artist, and I think mine is, is a little more unconventional um, compared to uh, some people that I know. And um, I really sort of dabble in a wide variety of different types of art. And so I'm excited to sort of chat with you all about, you know, my path. And, uh, you know, everyone's path is different. I just, you know, want people to know that there isn't one way to pursue art. Just so you guys know what I'm using today, um, I think I already mentioned I have my Stillman and Burn watercolor sketchbook. I, I enjoy working on this. I think it's hot press. The paper is quite smooth. I normally paint on cold press, um, but I guess I thought for a sketchbook it might be nice to have like a smoother paper. So yeah, I'm going to be also using um, my Schmincke watercolor set. I created this sketch with pencil and then inked it with a sepia toned marker. I believe I used the Faber-Castell um, sepia tone markers. In case you're curious, the paintbrushes that I'm using, the two mop brushes that I'm using right now are um, from Raphael. They're synthetic. I tend to prefer synthetic. I find that I get a more consistent, reliable point with synthetic. The ones that are synthetic in the style of natural hair tend to hold plenty of water, I find. And they are just way more cost effective than the natural hair bristles that are on the market today. First off, um, I'll tell you guys a little bit about where I'm from. I was born and raised in Burnaby which is a suburb just outside of Vancouver, BC in Canada. I really did not enjoy high school, but I did find solace in uh, creative classes. I was terrible at math and really bad at remembering things, memorization. So I, I did tend to do better in art class. I, in high school, I tried everything. I really enjoyed media arts. I enjoyed photography. I really enjoyed English classes most, actually, out of everything. I loved my English classes. So when I was graduating and deciding what I wanted to do, the only thing that made sense to me, I didn't think it would be possible to pursue a career in art, so I thought, for some reason, I thought that English would be a, a wiser choice in terms of career path. So I went to a college in um, North Vancouver called Capilano, and I took a lot of English classes there. I ended up finishing an associate's degree, which is like halfway to a bachelor. My plan was sort of to Take, get my associate's degree at uh, at this college and then further pursue English in uh, at university to get my bachelor's. But I found writing papers that frequently really draining and I wasn't really enjoying it anymore. And I was sort of like doodling and drawing a lot in my free time for fun. 
As a part of my associate's degree, I was allowed to take an art credit. So I took a drawing class and I enjoyed it so much. And I remember I, I, you know, I was putting off writing papers and like drawing in, in my sketchbook. And around this time, I had rediscovered my love of comics through the discovery of more mature graphic novels. I was reading books um, by Daniel Close, uh, Chris Ware, and uh, Jamie Hernandez. And I think my sister was like, well, why don't you just go to art school? If, uh, you know, you're drawing all the time, you don't want to do your homework, you should, all you want to do is draw, you should just go to art school. And that was sort of a, a really surprising moment for me. I, I was like, you know what? Yeah, um, I love doing this. And it's going to be hard to, to get a career in art making, but I, I'm going to go for it. So instead of enrolling in uh, university for English, I decided to apply with a portfolio to the art school here in Vancouver, Emily Carr, and I got in. I was so excited. Although I did intentionally go to art school with the thought of really getting better at making comics. In my first couple years at art school, I tried everything. I tried sculpture, I tried media arts, I tried bookmaking and uh, printmaking, and over time I just really decided I wanted to focus on drawing so that I could get really good at drawing the human figure and stuff that I thought would be really important for comic making. Once I graduated, I really didn't know what I wanted to do or how to approach working in comics. So I decided to continue working my part-time retail job, but switch to full-time to save up some money and uh, just sort of make art whenever I had free time. And I really didn't like it. I really wasn't happy and I couldn't figure, I couldn't figure it out. So eventually, I came into contact with this little artist community in Vancouver um, called Cloudscape Comics, and it is a it's a community of comic artists in the city. They they all come together, work together, and share their ideas. And this organization ended up kind of changing my life. Cloudscape is such a, a unique organization. Cloudscape has charitable status uh, because of all the community outreach that they do with the, the arts community. But on top of that, they're also a publishing company. Um, they focus primarily on publishing artists and writers um, who are creating comic work in British Columbia, but they have published artists from all over Canada and the United States and they, they publish a wide variety of anthologies and single author graphic novels. Um, I just started attending the weekly meetings and drawing with people and making friends in the comics community. And it really helped inspire me to make great comics. After I would spent some time with all these great local artists at Cloudscape, it really gave me the confidence to start looking for work in the art field. So I ended up applying and accepting a position with a company that does decorative arts. They sell art pieces, um, really fancy stuff to hotels and uh, private residences around the world. And it was such a great experience. I worked for for this company for four years. And, and I think I learned more there about color theory and composition than I did at art school or anywhere else I had taken classes. Since I took that job, I ended up also finding work, uh, working as a scenic painter for theater. I worked for a couple of theaters in the city of Vancouver and in the city of Richmond, another suburb of uh, the city of Vancouver. And uh, I thought that was super rewarding. I just kind of threw myself into it um, without <laughs> any experience and made some really cool stuff. So 
yeah, when you're when you're working as an artist, you kind of just have to take what comes to you, and um, you're gonna be afraid, but it's probably gonna pay off. My comic work started off being very like autobiographical. I enjoyed making comics about myself and my life. Um, I did a series about um, dating on the internet, um, and I did. I've done lots of like mini comics um, and short stories that have been published um, through Cloudscape Comics. And then in 2019, I published my first edited graphic novel anthology. This is something that I worked really hard on. I gathered a bunch of local, talented comic artists, um, most of which I had met through Friends of Cloudscape or uh, people that I had known in school. And we came together and created this book called The Witching Hours. And it was a graphic novel collection of short stories all about magical women, um, witches, and beings. And it's probably one of the favorite things that I've ever done. Um, you can actually buy a copy if you want, um, and it's all on the Cloudscape website. And I'll provide a link in the info underneath the video for where you can buy The Witching Hours. Um, and since I became so involved in Cloudscape, I ended up on the board and uh, you know, and became even more involved, and now I am working for them as an editor of comic books. So you just kind of have to like find gigs where you can. And uh, in my free time, I started making cut paper pieces. I've been working on a graphic novel project. I decided I'd open an Etsy store, and then I, and then I figured, why not try a YouTube channel? So I think uh, I've just kind of been trying everything and uh, figuring out what I like. I find there's always those days where things feel impossibly difficult, frustrating, and you don't really feel like you're gonna be going anywhere or you don't think what you're doing is working out. I think that's really just what every artist goes through. I think that there's a lot of pressure to find a style, find your style and stick to it and make that who you are but that's something that's never really worked for me so much. I mean, I'm sure I have a style within making comics. I have a style within watercolor painting. Um, that's kind of unavoidable just because your hand is unique to you and your hand is going to make decisions that you don't even realize it's making. I felt a lot of pressure before to um, to make one kind of work, but I find that so limiting. Um, I need to be able to experiment. So I, I really enjoy experimenting with different mediums. I work digitally often now on my iPad, and that's, the, that's what I find keeps me sane is being able to switch between different things while giving myself room to experiment in uh, with other projects. So you may have gathered from this illustration that I, I do enjoy hiking, um, walking through trails. It's maybe more of a fantasy or like how I like to see myself as because I do spend a lot of time indoors stuck uh, at my desk working but when I have free time and I have the motivation I love to get outside and enjoy the the forest
I also really enjoy gardening. Um, I have a little garden on my patio and this summer um, my, I was growing peas and zucchini and all sorts of herbs. Um, I also really enjoy house plants. I have a little collection of house plants that I've managed to keep alive. And uh, I'd love to do a video on house plants. I think my next video is going to be me painting my favorite house plants. So stay tuned for that. I really enjoy crafting. I uh, I really, I love to knit. I just taught myself to crochet um, like a couple years ago. Really enjoy any everything that involves DIY, uh, working with your hands. Um, I find it really satisfying. I also really love video games. Um, I I'm a huge fan of Animal Crossing, so I spent so much time playing Animal Crossing when it first came out. I So I shared the game with my husband. And we don't always agree on the direction that we want to take our uh, island in, but we found a couple ways to compromise. Last but certainly not least, I had to mention my adorable cat Ripley. She's my baby and I love her more than life itself. So the first video that I ever posted on this channel was a walkthrough for how I paint cat portraits and I paint Ripley in that video. So if you want to see more video footage of me painting my cat, you should go check out that video on my channel. And here's the finished sketchbook page. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had a really good time painting this. Um, I'd love to know what you thought of this video, if like what kind of content you guys are enjoying watching. So please leave me a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.